Does Honda's new generator parallel with the old generator? We'll check out the loads to see how they separate as the loads get higher and if they actually function properly using microwaves, AC units, and more. Okay, so both of these are out here warming up, getting ready, and I have them paralleled together using a parallel box. That one is from Wynn. They're almost all the same. You can use the Honda one if you want, but honestly, all this is is a bunch of wires that go into a box and connect together. Don't overthink it. Then it's going to be protected by the watchdog. This is cool because you can keep track of volts, also your watts, amps, and more. I'll have a link down below if you want to check those out. Now, some of you probably remember the meter I used to use that I built a long time ago. Well, now you can actually buy that meter, which is pretty impressive that somebody made it. But I found that the watchdog is actually more accurate along with using just regular meters. But we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to turn these both off at eco and then we'll head in. Okay, so we'll head inside and we'll turn on the AC unit first. And whenever you do that, you should have your generators off of eco mode. Now, this is a 15K AC unit, and I did install a soft start just recently, and I do have a video for that. I can leave that in the link down below if you want. And if you notice the meter on the right, now right here is where the compressor kicks on. If you look at the meter on the left, okay, compressor is now on, so AC is up and running. But the generator on the right, which is the new one, for some reason the meter has done this several times. It'll kind of peg all the way up and come back, kind of has a slower response. So we'll wait for that to kind of level out before we turn on a couple more things. But this is also a really great time to smash that like button if you happen to like the video. And if you want, feel like subscribing and being part of the group, definitely appreciate it. But now you can see that the meter is kind of leveled out. And so we'll look at the amperage and how it spreads. So we're at about five amps on the older generator and almost seven on the right. So just about a two amp spread. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on another unit. We're gonna go to the front bedroom here and we'll turn on this uh, AC unit. This one is a 13.5 and I also installed a soft start on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the fan first. And this is something you should do is just don't peg it, but let the load kind of slowly creep up on it. And then we'll go ahead and turn it all the way on to just the regular AC side, so low fan. And we'll watch this kick up, there it goes. Again, the one on the right seems to just have a slower reaction time. But now that it's kind of leveled out, we're gonna turn on a couple more things, but notice the spread is just a little bit more so about three amps or so. We're gonna go out here now and actually take a reading real quick before we turn on some more stuff. And we're gonna turn these off of Eco. So turn that one off, I missed that, let me come back. Okay, press that. And you can turn that one on and off with your phone. So now these idle down, which is pretty cool because you can see they're running not quite max load, we're at about half roughly. And so we'll take our meter here just to kind of see how it compares. And this one is the, the little screen on your left, so about 8.3, 8.2. And sometimes when you turn the little handheld meter away from the wire, it might lose 0.1 or 0.2, but notice right there it went to 8.4. We'll check this one. Let me get this around there because I am holding the camera. And this will be the meter on the right, or at least the, the monitor on the right. And so you can see that now about 11.5. So overall, that's pretty accurate. So it is kind of nice that the Honda, you know, displays and the app is pretty accurate as far as how much output is being put out. And then of course you can keep track of it with that as well. Now, one thing I did have to add a bonding plug because I am using the watchdog. I don't need it there because it's actually bonded inside the parallel box. So it looks like it's correct. And then it just goes into a 30 amp connection, which goes into my RV which that's a 208Y, so I can run my whole trailer off of a 30 amp connection, really. I can't overload it, obviously, but I can still run both ACs off of it. So now what we're gonna do is turn on the electric water heater. And if you have an electric water heater, these draw a lot of power, like 1500 watts, but you wanna make sure that there is water in the water heater or the element will burn up pretty much immediately. So you can see now, look how it just pegs that needle on the left and kind of equalizes out a little bit. Same thing with the one on the right. And I do have these videos synced pretty tight. Um, they might be a half second off, but we'll go ahead and also turn on our converter. And this is another thing too, is don't just turn everything on in your trailer all at once. You wanna make sure all your loads are off, but 
if you have solar you won't even need that converter so that is a nice thing but we'll let this just kind of level out for a second then we're going to turn on the refrigerator and we'll put that on ac so you'll see this kick up now this uses about 350 watts once it's up and running but of course if you have it on propane then it's drawing off of the battery and hardly uses any energy but so now you can see that kicks up and now both of our generators they're just about max load so now that we're back out here you can see that they're still idled down which is actually kind of cool um, even though they're close to max neither one of them are at max rpm and so we'll take another look here oops sorry get that closed and so just about 20 amps so that's pretty darn close right there 19.9 let's take a look at our total load so we'll go over here on this side grab that wire oh sorry actually i'm supposed to be on the red or we can use a neutral as well so let me loop this around there and we'll see what our total output is should be about 35 34 and 33 so again i'm kind of tweaking the meter a little bit if i if i put it completely sideways you won't be able to see it so much because it's low to the ground and with a camera but there you go 35 2 so that's pretty much right on the money for that so we're going to go ahead and switch up a couple things but again both of them are idled down so it kind of makes you think are two generators running at this rpm is it going to be quieter than one large generator because we are running 35 amps that's a that's a lot of power so even though i hardly even use a generator anymore i'm mainly using the ecoflow delta pro now um so but kind of makes you wonder let me know what you think would be better two generators or just one real big one so and again i am running two ac units on a 50 amp service trailer so that also makes you think if you're just running a 30 amp service trailer well then one of these would be just fine unless you have two ac units and you would need two of these and one more thing to note too is notice our amp spread at about five amps now so or just a little bit more but we'll turn off the converter and the water heater let that calm down and then i'll show you like another kind of high load which will turn this off as well and then we'll fire up that microwave here in a second so let that settle down for just a couple seconds and then we'll just turn this on for a few seconds so you guys can see and again the one on the left is a lot quicker as far as its response time as far as the one on the right it's it's been like this pretty much since i've had it sometimes it's relatively quick but at least in this test anyway it always kind of lags as far as how it operates and how it kind of peaks and then comes back down but you can see the Honda on the left, it, it goes a lot quicker. So, so far, these work just fine together. We're gonna turn these off real quick. Turn off this front AC. Then we'll come over here, turn off the main AC, but now you can see that our amp spread is back down to only about two. So as the load builds, the amp spread obviously kind of builds up as well. And we are pretty much close to max on both of these generators as far as how many amps are allowed. Which is 21.7 amps for the new generator and 15 amps for the old one. So overall, what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below and be sure to smash the like button for me. And check out this other video right here.